sometimes just knowing marriage is not enough. Know what men want. Know what women want. We don't want the same thing. What men want in marriage is different from what women want in marriage. I'm serious. Women want love in marriage. A lot of love. So, brother, you're about to marry that sister. If you're not ready to go on a love journey, a long love journey, she will always want love from you in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the night. Say, yeah, no, my wife is different. She says, my wife is different. My wife is different. Pastor, my wife is different. My wife doesn't want too much love. Let me tell you what she did. She shut down for you. When you started, she tried to ask for it. She now saw that it's causing problem. So she has left you. The moment your wife is no longer making love demand, it's because she has abandoned you. <laughs> oh God, she has abandoned you. You are now flatmates. And you are the father of our children. I'm serious, I'm serious, I'm serious. A woman is designed to always ask for what? Love. That's why I said, husband, love your... As Christ loved the... So if you want to marry, you want to marry, you are, young, you are single, you'll be married, you have to be ready for a long love journey. You'll be giving love in the morning, you give in the afternoon, you give in the night. Are you ready? You guys ready? If you don't understand that part of marriage, after one children or two children, you say, what is even your problem? What's your problem now? Then she will now abandon you. She won't ask for it again. She won't talk to you about it again. So you don't tag her, but she wants it. She has just shut down. How, do she, how is she meeting that need? That's why some women go outside their marriage to start making no friends with another man. That's why sometimes some women too, they plug into African magic. He has to pour the love somewhere. So every man that wants to be happily married, you must know what woman, woman wants. And I'm telling you, that's what they want. She wants you to text her. You left the house 8 a.m. Between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. that you're coming back home. Can we be very practical? She wants you to talk to her minimum twice or once. Either with SMS or with a call. He said, but not, what am I going to tell her? What you used to tell her when you were dating her. <laughs> if you're not ready for that kind of journey, don't marry. Woman wants to hear how much you love them on a consistent. Woman, do you, know what to, do you want to know what men want? Respect. That place they put plenty of meat in front, they just use that meat to respect him. <laughs> to honor him. Why they serve him in too many places? They just want to honor him. Every man wants to feel like a king in his own kingdom. Are you following me? Are you following me? He doesn't want to be challenged. He doesn't want to be embarrassed. He doesn't want to be made to look like he doesn't know enough. He wants to be honored and respected. Men are born with ego. A little what? If two boys are here now, two small, small boys, if they fight and one carry the other one, hit him on the floor, boom. Once there are no girls around, the guy is fine. <laughs> the guy will just look around. Once there are no girls, you say, no worry, the next time you see, you just walk away. If there is one single girl around, if the guy, after, after you hit him on the floor, he look around and saw a girl, the guy is going to kill himself there. <laughs> You have to, he, he has to carry his own. That's how men are created. Wired for ego. Wired for ego. So if you want to marry as a woman, are you ready to massage somebody's ego once in a while? Huh? Hello? You have to be ready to massage somebody's ego once in a while. Because there is an ego part of him that needs to be fed. Our mothers are here, they can testify. That's why you see them saying Yoruba, Olowo me. 
You know why they are saying that? It is 50 years ago he paid her dowry, dowry but he's still saying it. She's still saying it. Many women don't know that men are easy to capture. They think only men can capture. You can capture a man too. Am I correct? If I'm not saying anything, men, say, if I'm saying the right thing, say, praise the Lord, men. You see now? I'm representing well. <laughs> That's what man wants. He wants to be honored. He wants to be respected. He doesn't want you, even when you have a contrary opinion, he doesn't want you to throw it at his face as if he's a stupid man. He doesn't want it. I've seen men who apologize to their wife kneeling down in the bedroom. In the bedroom. <laughs> Or am I lying? Once there's nobody watching, he will go on his knees and say, I look the other man. He went on his knees now. And I've seen men who even in the bedroom or outside, they will not kneel down. But one thing I've come to realize that what we want is not the same. The woman wants so much love. The man wants so much respect. Anyone who can give that to their partner will be happy forever. Can we go deeper? Because of time. To build a happy home, you have to build a grateful home. A home full of gratitude. You can't build a happy home until that home is grateful. Grateful in what sense? You must learn to appreciate God and appreciate each other. Hello? Hello? Is it landing well? You have to find a way to acknowledge God in your home and acknowledge your spouse all the time in your home. Don't take your spouse for granted. Your spouse has been praying children's school fees since you were children, your children were born. And he had just paid another one in September. It is not wrong to tell the children to go and thank him. You know why? Huh? If you don't appreciate, what you don't appreciate will depreciate. Say, is it not his job? It is his job, but you need to appreciate him. It's not all the men that are paying school fees. If he's putting food on the table, appreciate him. The heart of gratitude is required in a home where they want to be happy. And it's not just gratitude to God, even gratitude to each other. Oga, madam is cooking. You meet fresh food all the time, hot food all the time. You can't eat your money by yourself. Oh. You can't compare that homemade food to those ones you eat in restaurants where they put everything in front of you. Those ones are made with some tomatoes that have gone out. Oh. Your wife went to market to select the tomatoes, select the tatashe, select the onion, get you the best, blended it, Went to kitchen, cook it. Oh, that is your money, fine. But somebody cook that food, appreciate that person. Any home where they don't appreciate themselves again and they lose their sense of gratitude, with time they lose their joy. Because it takes a grateful heart to have a joyful heart. I would say joyful heart. And when you have two joyful heart, you have a joyful home. I know many, many couples take themselves for granted. Especially after five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. You are used to him buying you Christmas gifts or birthday gifts. So your thank you is not strong again because it is his job. It is her job. Sometimes I thank my wife for the similar things, even for helping to take care of all of us. Because somebody is coordinating the children. Somebody is coordinating the home. If they leave us to coordinating that home, we cannot coordinate that home. Except some very exceptional men. But most men, 70% of us, cannot coordinate a home. Hallelujah. That's why when you are looking for what you can find in your own bedroom, it takes your wife to bring it out. Have you noticed? You are looking for your, <laughs> your shaving stick or your something that is personal to you. Then you look, 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 you are frustrated. You now go and call her and say, please, did you help me find, how can she find what is your own? Then I say, please, can you help me? Do you, help me? Do you see? She will now say, ah, she'll just walk straight. 
and pick it out. Let me tell you why. She's the manager of that home. She's the one managing the home. Sometimes we need to appreciate them. Don't say hey, she's not contributing money now. I'm the one working and working. Your money cannot coordinate the house. It takes somebody to coordinate the home. Sometimes when we stop appreciating ourselves, our love starts depreciating with time. We start taking each other for granted. Amen. 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 We're talking about a happy home. It's not perfect, but they're appreciating themselves. In the midst of their imperfection, find something to appreciate your spouse for. I know your spouse is not perfect. Nobody is perfect. But look out, uh, look out for something. You know. I've come to realize as a pastor, sometimes people will say their wife is not good. Their husband is not good. They will go separate way. Few years later, that woman has entered the hand of another man. And the man has really appreciated her and has. Then you see them doing like this. One of my daughters, you know, many years ago, our daughter's her husband left her. He said he's not doing it again. The lady cried, 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 cried. Later, we encourage her, don't worry, continue your life. Then another man took her. Now, they had a child together. So because they had a child together, they always, you know, the child is always going for holiday and all those things. They always say, okay, let's meet somewhere so I can take my child. Let me somewhere so I can take my child. So that physical contact still comes once in a while. She used to drop the child alone before. She would drive there and drop the child. Hello, hello, they will go. Then now, here come a good man. Everybody say a good man. She now has a good man in her life that will not allow her to drop the child alone. And this very good looking man will carry the baby girl with his wife now and they will take him there. The guy started, he started, he started giving them attitude. And then one day, he was now telling her, he said, be careful with men. No. I said, whose business is that? Who cares? What's your problem? Be careful with men. Which one? From who? To who? What's your, what's your business? You know what's happening to him? Jealousy. He's beginning to see that somebody has taken over his territory. And that person is doing a good job. She was glowing. The daughter was glowing. They were happy. His eyes was doing like this. What you... Don't wait to lose it before you appreciate it. Don't wait to lose it before you appreciate it. That madam you say is good, she's good for nothing because she's not dropping enough money. And it is that girl in your workplace who is earning a lot of good money. And the only thing you are thinking about is what she has that your wife doesn't have. You will soon discover that there are many things your wife has that she doesn't have. It's just a matter of time. Maybe she can't cook. <laughs> Maybe she can't what? Maybe she can't take care of you at all. You have to take care of yourself. I mean, you don't know that there are women who can't cook? You don't know? Oh, many, especially in this generation. They cannot cook. Oh. And they say it on social media. That means I cannot cook. Oh. If they, they say it on social media that they cannot cook. Leave it or leave, take it or leave it. And they tell you they cannot wash boxer. Ah, that they cannot wash boxer. Am I the one that uses the boxer? Wash your boxer, my friend. <laughs> they tell you they cannot clean the house. Ah, are they not cleaners? Get a cleaner, let them clean the house. There are women like that. So what you don't appreciate, I pray you don't lose it until you appreciate it. I pray you will not lose it before you appreciate it. Many people, until they lose a thing, they don't appreciate that thing. In second service, we said, celebrate what you have while you are trusting God for what you lack. You remember that? I must say, I celebrate what I have. Why I'm trusting God for what I lack. Can we go a little more? So ladies and gentlemen, marriage is not something where you just keep receiving and keep receiving, but you don't know how to say thank you. You have to learn to say thank you. That simple word, T-H-A-N-K. Y-O-U, thank you. is one of the most powerful words that can help to revive many relationships. That's the word thank you. 
You were sick. He took you to hospital. He pays the bill. We know it's his responsibility, but when you are okay, say thank you. We have seen those who abandon their wife when they are sick. Hello? We have seen people who abandon... Some years ago, in Abekuta, uh, that general hospital, I had to go to greet somebody in the female ward regularly. And I was told, about six people in the ward, I was told that the remaining five women, since their husband dropped them, they've not seen them. They say, Pastor, look at all these women. It was their husband that brought them here. Since they dropped them, we have not seen them. So you were sick. Your husband was running everywhere, running everywhere, running everywhere. When you are fine, say thank you. Or oh, it's the other way around. Olga, you were strong. Your wife was pampering you. She gave you the right food. She took you to hospital. When you are fine, say what? Thank you. Simple word, but powerful word. Short, but powerful. An arrogant person doesn't want to say it. Learn to say thank you. I will say thank you. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Do you know if you can make this word very common in your marriage, you won't have more, more, many trouble. Thank you. And you're not saying it because you, want, you are saying it sincerely from your, from your heart. 